and Shay, good morning. Welcome to the Muskogee Creek National Council quarterly session. Today is Saturday, October the 29th, 2022. The time is 9.22 a.m. My name is Speaker William Lowe, and I call this meeting to order. At this time, I would like to ask Pastor Ernest Best from Weyagutki Indian Baptist Church to say this morning's invocation. I'd like to say good morning to the National Council as well as all of the visitors and everyone that's here this morning for the privilege and the opportunity to come and, and open this session with prayer. And uh, don't you know I appreciate and love our nation and be yeah, thankful to be a part of it. Our Father, we do want to bow in your divine presence this morning with thanksgiving for your mercy, for your grace, for your love and your kindness. Thank you, Father, for our, the direction and the leadership of our nation. And do pray, Heavenly Father, for each and every one who is in that position, Heavenly Father, council members, our, our uh, chief, everyone. And ask you, our Father, to bless them with your presence and guide them with your spirit. Heavenly Father, we live in some very uh, struggling times in our, in our time. And we just want to ask you, Father, to help us and guide us in a way that would honor and glorify your name and our people. Heavenly Father, we, we certainly are in need of your presence guidance and leadership in our life. So, Father, we want to ask you to be with them today as they take care of their agenda, their business. Everything that takes place in this, in this building today will be that which will help our people in various areas of our life as they make their decisions. So, Father, you bless them. You be with them and, and, and give the right counsel to each and every one in their minds and hearts. To do that, Father, we're, we're here to be a strength and a, and a help and an encouragement to our nation. And so, Father, we just pray that your blessings would be upon each and every one of the members, Lord, today. We love you and thank you, Lord, Father, for the way you have led our churches and our people in these years that have been passed and gone. And so, Father, we ask you to bless today with your presence and guidance in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> But I'll pass the earnest best. We greatly appreciate you, sir. Next item on the agenda, roll call. National Council Secretary, Alicia Strong. Speaker William Lowe. Here. Kaylin Cloud. Yalega. Mary Crawford. Yeah, my guy. Joyce Steer. Yalega. Patrick Freeman. Here. Sandra Golden. Leonard Gouge. Here. Nelson Harjo. Joseph Hicks. Here. Randall Hicks. Present. Robert Huff. Present. Anna Marshall. Present. Charles McHenry. Here. Thomas Inyahola Osborne. Present. Carol Proctor. Here. Mark Randall. Here. Speaker, you have 15 present, one absent. 15 present, one absent. That constitutes a quorum. Any business conducted will be valid. At this time, I would like to introduce some special guests, our Royalty, I'd like to ask Ms. Tima Yarji, Ms. Muskogee Nation, to stand and be recognized. That oath for being here. And Junior Miss Shinova Barnett, Junior Miss Muskogee Nation. That oath for being here. It's always great to see you. At this time, quarterly report, Principal Chief David W. Hill. Miss Jay and San Lay, good morning. It's good to see everyone. I know it's been uh, probably more than a couple of years since the core report in person, but thank you, uh, Speaker, Second Speaker, and National Council. And also at this time, I'd like to uh, acknowledge my cabinet members. If you're a cabinet member, please stand up. 
Let's see what's happening. And those that are in, I think, for cabinet members, thank you for coming. Also, it's the members of uh, Trustee Ceremony Ground. Morning. Just one report out. I see that your agenda is pretty lengthy, so I'll keep mine as short as possible. And uh, also, with all the events going on, I know everyone is uh, ready to get out. Just want to say that uh, within the last year or so, in the last quarter, we just say Creek Nation has done a great job. In July, the Federal Arms, Federal Firearms Technical Assistance Project were announced, and the Muscogee Creek Nation was affirmed to receive funding. Muscogee Creek Nation is one of only six sites and only tribe to participate. The funds will restore reservation safety, which provides resources geared toward reducing domestic violence, homicide, and injuries committed by firearms. This advancement of our sovereignty and commitment to public safety. We also affirm the commitment to our administration to bring prosperity and progress to our citizens through an increase in service. Working together with the National Council, we have expanded tribal vehicle tags to any citizens in Oklahoma outside reservation boundaries. To mark this occasion, we had several ribbon cuttings, one our new tag office in Okima, and two others in Coeta and Jinx. I definitely want to appre uh, appreciate the National Council for um, some legislation improvement. Thank you very much. We, you can drive through Oklahoma City, Tulsa, surrounding areas. You can see our tribal tags going everywhere. So thank you very much. The Scotia Creek Nation provided 8,000 gallons of water to tribal and non-tribal citizens living within the affected communities within the reservation that had water line breaks in various and other emergencies, including Holdenville, Lamar, Bigsby, Leonard, and also uh, with the assistance of Bobby Howard, uh, assisting majority of our tribal ceremony grounds and churches for funerals. I uh, want to give a big hand to Bobby. You can always see him driving around in the water buffalo and doing what he can to help service our, our ground, churches, and all the communities. Thank you. We also committed to putting people to work so they can provide for their families and stable income. When we held the hiring event for over 80 open positions within Muscogee Creek Nation, it was hosted by an employment training office on site the interviews and application process. And I believe they have one coming up shortly for another um, hiring event. So thank you for that employment training department. Preservation of our language and culture will always be a priority. We held the first Muscogee Language Symposium hosted by the College of Muscogee Nation and Muscogee Language Program with emphasis on building a coalition of instructors. I will say it was, it was uh, pretty well attended, and a lot of elders came to visit, it seemed like, and, and they just wanted to get out and get out and uh, just uh, speak the language to, our, to everyone. And I want to thank Dr. Monty Randall. Kayla Harjo and Judy Montel for doing this, and uh, I think this will just be one of many that they'll host, so thankful for that. <coughs> in August, we uh, partnership with the Muscogee Language Program and Okmogee Public School to have Muscogee Language Course added as the official curriculum, and are looking to expand this to other schools inside our reservation. We helped the celebration in Okmogee to commemorate the historic three-term appointment of of citizen Joy Harjo as a U.S. Poet Laureate. We wanted to honor Joy and thank her for being the first indigenous person to hold that position and how well she represented the Muscogee Creek Nation. And I'd also like to recognize a couple of other citizens who achieved, um, who achieved a lot in their, in their uh, position. Lauren King, who is the first uh, Muscogee Creek citizen to be a federal judge at the District Court in Washington. Washington State. So I want to thank her. Two days later, Captain uh, Calvin Foster of the Navy was promoted to an admiral. So both of them are the first in Scotia Creek Nation to hold that position. So we want to thank them. In September, our reintegration program held a graduation ceremony at OSUIT for their sixth class to compete the fire optic lineman technician program offered to all citizens of a federally recognized tribe and in collaboration with Muscogee Creek Nation and OSUIT. We believe that in order for our tribal citizens to have a chance outside after being incarcerated, 
We must be giving them opportunities to sustain themselves long term. So thank you very much for the reintegration program for their outstanding job. Our community research development team hosted the gathering community event at the College Cox Omniplex in Okmoji. This was an inaugural event providing opportunity to fellowship and have fun among our charter communities. And I think they had 450 tickets available and over 500 attended. And uh, I want to congratulate the National Council for winning the, the Whipple Ball. But I do say that I kind of helped my speed up, so next year may be different. But thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun to, to get out and uh, fellowship among everyone. So thank you very much. We were joined by Secretary of Interior Deb Holland for the 30th Annual of Major Indigenous Celebration in Macon, Georgia. We came for celebration, but we're also able to advocate for the advancement of the Okmoji National Park efforts to increase our presence in the ancestral southeastern homeland. Our commitment to protection and preservation of the region remains steadfast. You know, as a uh, former principal chief, um, I have to thank all the previous um, principal chief and national council for standing up for our for our ancestral homes and our rights, and I will say that this administration, and I think this council will carry on and move forward on that foundation that they built for us. So thank you. The Muscogee Nation made history with the presidential disaster declaration made to the tribal nation for the severe storms that damaged parts of our reservation in May. This declaration will route disaster assistance claims from FEMA to the tribe rather than the state. It's a testament to the belief that administration has an ability to self-govern in our statute as status as a fellow foreign. I will say that we're the second in the United States, but we are the first tribe in Oklahoma to have this declaration. And I want to thank again Mr. Bobby Howard for pushing it through with FEMA and working and having that come uh, cooperation with them and the, and the partnership with them. Thank you, Mr. Howard. We continue progress at our college in Muskogee Nation with the groundbreaking ceremony of new lecture hall and new lecture and exhibit hall. The new 14,000 square foot facility will include 400 seating capacity auditorium, two classrooms, and a few office spaces and the STEM lab. Definitely want to thank Dr. Monty Randall, the board, and the Fisco to uh, to grow. We know the college is going to keep on going. That's what we're, uh, and I thank all the uh, support for the National Council as well. Thank you. I also want to point out that during the quarter of the Muscogee Nation placed a total of 11 parcels of land in the trust, and perhaps more importantly, three of those land were individually owned. So I definitely uh, hate to embarrass them, but Sonia, please, I know you're here, you and your department stand up, did a lot of great work. I want y'all to be recognized for the work you do in the real estate department. Thank you. <laughs> and I will tell you, Sonia is not afraid to tell you something, right or wrong, if you want to hear it or not. But thank you, that staff, staff works hard. Also, I cannot overstate the importance of the job day in and day out of our Family Violence Prevention Program does. In conjunction with our law enforcement and justice system, I'm proud to say that the best best way to commemorate Domestic Violence Awareness Month is by building capacity in the areas where we serve and protect victims. On September 28th, the National Council unanimously enacted violence, special tribal criminal jurisdiction to take effect October 1st. This legislation is called the Muscogee Creek Nation Victims Protection and Jurisdiction Expansion Act. This provides for expanded tribal jurisdiction over non-Indians on certain crimes in the reservation. Because of the dedication of so many in the departments I mentioned, we were ready to begin implementation on October 1st. And again, thank you, National Council, for the importance and uh, there's a new unanimously voted on and approved, so thank you very much. Please give them a big hand. They, they have a lot of honor, a lot of underpaid as well, so thank you. <laughs> at the end of the, this quarter, the permanent fund is, is currently at 421 million, 452, 577. 
which is a little less than the last quarter of $444 million. But due to the growth of our law enforcement, Attorney General's Office, District Court, Supreme Court, and the Chilling Family Environment, thank you for National Council for your support and appropriation. Thank you. As of September, our distribution for direct assistance, we have processed and approved 58,268 applications. Direct assistance to distribution, 55,721 were approved applications, and 29,000 approved for the vaccine application for the Muscogee Creek Nation citizens. Thank you. The emergency rental program, which provides rent and utility assistance for which provides rent and utility assistance for citizens whose their medium income is 80% or less. Program has ended for September 20, September 30th of 2022. Total application received 10,081. Total application approved 7,203. Total funds distributed 13,626,640,000. Thank you. Home Ownership Assistance Fund Program began October 10th to provide assistance for homeowners with delinquent mortgage, utilities, property tax, and homeowners insurance for citizens whose area medium income is 150 or less. Total application received 305, total application approved 45, and total funds distributed was 64,516. Temporary home assistance funded through the ICB. ICDBG are for currently serving 29 citizens and is available until March 2023. The program provides temporary assistance while helping citizens seek housing through other Muscogee Creek Nation housing programs. Rental subsidy program will subsidize rent for citizens who have limited income to provide suitable housing. This quarter we have assisted 13 citizens and can serve up to 50 citizens who are in need of rental subsidies. And at this moment, I would like to, um, I don't know if he's here or not, but uh, Rover Wynn, there he is. Um, just want to say when he first um, came in as acting, I uh, gave him an opportunity to say, Chief, what is your goal? I said, well, I had several citizens had, uh, had contacted me about having a women's honor guard. So one of the first steps I told uh, Mr. Wayne was, please, you know, see what you can to get it moving, get it going. And uh, with the assistance of Jerry Wisner, Attorney General, who is also a female, uh, who served in the military, uh, contacted, I think, with uh, Representative Marshall, which they could be coming up, to have that. So you'll see the legislation coming through to have our first female or women on a guard. So I think that's something that's uh, needed. They also, um, you know, sacrifice. So <clears throat> I want to thank you, Rob, uh, Representative Marshall, for um, submitting this legislation. Thank you very much. In closing, after these accomplishments, we carry through this momentum and our collective voices to the podium. So that we are ready and willing collaborators and elected officials that work with us, not against us. To move our communities, our state, and our nation forward. I just want to say um, one of the things, this election, this state election, is very, very important. Not only to the state of Oklahoma, but to all tribal nations. I always like to uh, remind those that are coming in front of a state at the state level that the Oklahoma impact that we had in 2019, 15 billion, that, he, that the state total combined was given to them, was our contribution to the state. I know several uh, speakers have been in several meetings with me where. Uh, they come to the nation for support. But that door opens both ways from the state. We need support as well. But instead of working against us, we want the state level to work with us. It's not only my blood, we are Muscogee Creek citizen, but also we are Oklahoma citizen. We also vote. 
So it's very important. November 8th, please get out and vote. It's uh, not only for, we're looking at the next four years, but also it's the future generation that's going to help be the outcome of what happens. So <clears throat> I, I can't stress enough the importance of this election that's coming up. So thank you, National Council. I know I kept it short. So hopefully in the head of the nation in January, uh, Jenna may be shorter. <laughs> But O Chief Hill, we greatly appreciate you and your cabinet members for everything that you do for our great nation, sir. At this time, the next item on the agenda, approval of minutes. We have minutes from an emergency session, September 20, 2022. Planning session, September 20, 2022. Pre-agenda, regular session, September 24, 2022. Emergency session, September 28, 2022. Emergency Section 2, September 28, 2002. At this time, I would like to entertain a motion for approval. So. Representative Anna Marshall makes a motion to approve the minutes with any changes necessary. Seconded by Representative Thomasine Yahola Osborne. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Anna Marshall. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Yes. Daryl Proctor. Yes. Mark Randolph. Yes. Dalen Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Steer. Yes. Patrick Freeman. Yes. Sandra Golden. Yes. Leonard Gouge. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Randall Hicks. Yes. Robert Huff. Yes. Speaker, we have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. All aforementioned minutes are approved. On to the order of business. NCR 22-011, a resolution of the Muscogee Creek National Council confirming Cynthia M. Tiger to serve on the Muscogee Media Editorial Board. Sponsor, Representative Anna Marshall. Motion to adopt. Representative Anna Marshall makes a motion to adopt. Second by Representative Second. Joyce Deer. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? No. Thomasine Hella Osborne? No. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? No. Galen Cloud? No. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Leonard Gouge? No. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? No. Robert Huft? No. Speaker, you have seven in favor, seven against. You have to, so you need to break the tie. My tiebreaker vote is yes. We have eight in favor, seven against. Eight in favor, seven against. NCR 22-011 is adopted. Ms. Cynthia, are you still in the... Please welcome her to the Muscogee Media Board. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, TR 22-151, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute an Oklahoma State Department of Education data sharing agreement. Sponsor, Representative Mary Crawford. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Mary Crawford makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Joyce Deer. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no dis discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-151 is adopted. TR 22-152, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a legal services 
attorney agreement between the Muscogee Creek Nation and Michael D. Parks for the purpose of providing legal services for the Muscogee Creek Nation Realty Department. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Make your motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Galen Cloud. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, voice of vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-152 is adopted. TR 22-153, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a, a memorandum of agreement with the Indian Health Service for Project OK 22-231, which will provide adequate wastewater disposal facilities for eight existing Native American-owned homes in Muscogee County, Oklahoma. Sponsor, Representative Charles McHenry. Speaker, make a motion to adopt. Representative McHenry makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Thomas Inyahola Osborne. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? No discussion. Voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-153 is adopted. TR 22-154, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to submit a 2022 competitive Indian housing block grant application to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. Sponsor, Representative Galen Cloud. Speaker, I make a motion to adopt. Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Discussion? Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-154 is adopted. TR 22-155, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation amending TR 19-076, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation to suspend all special appropriations and donations as amended by TR 20-150, TR 21-080, TR 22-128, TR 22-143 and TR 22-150. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Galen Cloud. Discussion. Is there any discussion? Voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-155 is adopted. TR 22-156, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a coronavirus response and relief supplemental appropriations act agreement between the Oklahoma Department of Transportation and the Muscogee Creek Nation. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Galen Cloud. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-156 is adopted. TR 22-157, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a United States of America Department of Transportation Federal Transit Administration Grant Agreement. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Galen Cloud. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? 
Hearing no discussion. Voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-157 is adopted. TR 22-158, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a legal services contract between the nation and Cody Minyard, attorney at law, PLLC, for the Muscogee Creek Nation Office of Child Support Enfor Enforcement. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Joseph Hicks. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-158 is adopted. TR 22-160, a tribal resolution of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the principal chief to execute a contract accepting a donation of land located in Okmulgee County, Oklahoma. Sponsor, Representative Galen Cloud. Speaker, I make a motion to adopt. Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Second Speaker Robert Huft. Discussion. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, TR 22-160 is adopted. NCA 22-104, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation appropriating funds for the Muscogee Creek Nation Veterans Affairs Office to purchase motorcycles for military funeral and detail unit. Sponsor, Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Yehola Osborne makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by second speaker, Robert Huft. Discussion. Speaker. Yes, Representative Yehola Osborne. Um, we have Grover Wind in attendance, and I'd like for him to speak on the insurance. That was the issue prior. Yes, ma'am, very well. Thank you. Grover, the floor is yours. Please make sure the microphone is on, sir. Good to see you this morning. Now, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker and Council, thank you for seeing me this morning. <clears throat> In addition, in answer to your question there, yes, there was an issue about whether or not this would cover our light horsemen when they were performing duties. I have visited with uh, our Attorney General, Ms. Wisner. I thought she would be here today, but she said if she would be able for a conversation. We've also visited with your counsel over here. We've been visiting, I visited with uh, our own HR group and our uh, risk management. And uh, our, our last, our contact basically was with uh, Joshua. And I got an email from him saying, uh, Mr. Wynn, and this was Tuesday, it appears the work comp program has accepted a document that was drafted, please see below. And uh, on, the, on the document itself, it says, I don't see any concerns regarding insurance coverage for motorcycle mounted law enforcement LPH. If I recall correctly, there were concerns that the motorcycle LHP employee volunteered to provide services such as escorting or parades, would they be covered? It appears the document they have put together it addresses the fact that the activities outlined would be within the scope of their duties as an employee. Uh, <clears throat> we had uh, Light Horse, we talked with Light Horse again and what they'd done was they went back and added to the duties of their officers also not only um, motor vehicles but to, to include the motorcycles. So yes ma'am, now that we, we have that workman's comp issue covered. Thank you sir, thank you speaker. Yes ma'am, thank you. Questions? Representative Golden. Did the, <clears throat> thank you, Speaker. Mr. Wynn. Yes, ma'am. Did the uh, Light Horse Commission approve that? That I don't know, ma'am. I, I, I wasn't. Take it before them? The, no, I actually, that? I actually, I think uh, I, I talked with the, your, uh, uh, with our Light Horse Chief on regarding that. Oh, and you don't know if he took it? No, and so since it was an issue where we were actually, <laughs> Uh, we were actually, as, as a veterans department, donating this to the Light Horse Department, you know. No, I, I didn't. I, I visited with our chief, and I visited with their chief. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. You're welcome. Any other questions, concerns? Representative Hicks. Speaker. 
uh, stand by Representative Hicks. The other Representative Hicks has the floor. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, sir. Mr. Wynn, uh, yes, sir. questions that I received from citizens. Sure. What, why do we need the motorcycles opposed to light horse using or police vehicles? Um, and when, when we when McGurk first began, of course, you know, using light horse for escorts for our funerals, particularly our veterans, of course, I, you know, I'm partial in that direction there, but uh, a lot of times they were, uh, they were called or needed their vehicles elsewhere. By having the motorcycle set aside strictly for the uh, funeral detail, that allows them so we don't pull any vehicles from any other assignment. And if they're the call that they're needed for service in our, our McGirt reservation area, it doesn't affect that. So we're not affecting any of the vehicles over there. We're strictly using these so that we don't have to have one that we have the motorcycle or have a uh, light horse escort in us that gets a call that needs to go to Holdenville, for example. This allows this unit to be different. So we're not getting into the actual work day duty of the light horse police. The other thing too is on our Muskogee riders, that's a, that's a completely volunteer group. We don't pay them any gas, we don't do, it's, in, it's our Native American veterans and Native Americans who are escorting our veterans to the last mile to the cemetery or the church. A lot of times going through these towns, we don't have, without having a light horse escort, we don't have an opportunity to stop traffic. Two things, one is we could have half the detail going through with half of the funeral not being able. The other thing is the security and safety of these other riders. With Light Horse being able to escort it, they're able to move faster with the motorcycles. If you ever seen a motorcycle escort in highway patrol or in the cities, they're able to move quicker through traffic. But it allows the safety for these motor Muskogee riders, volunteers that we have. And that's one of the things that concern me the most is we ought to be concerned about these volunteers that are helping go the last mile with our veterans. And the other question I had was why Harley Davidson? Why, why are we purchasing the top notch? Well, actually, they're not top notch. They were actually, uh, they were actually, the the top notch was the uh, uh, BMWs. They were the top notch. We went with Harley for a couple of reasons. One, they were available. Two, they have a motorcycle package with them. Uh, the other motorcycle manufacturers, we looked at three different, uh, uh, we had three different bids, and the others didn't have the lights accessible. So with the Harleys, they already have everything we need, so we could have the lights and, and the communication and all that. So without having to buy another package from nothing to make it complete, Harley already has it. They already have, they already do, they already have, already have motorcycle, uh, or mo police motorcycles. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hicks. Joseph Hicks. Are you still on the line, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, sir. Um, my, my question or comment maybe is, you know, as a mayor myself, you know, I've been uh, over on this, uh, coming up with this plan for the car cycle. But the uh, concern I have about it is that I know we're not working with the plan is being. Um, and also, I know it was said so that's kind of my concern so can somebody answer that for me yes sir thank you representative hicks grover would you like to chime in on that sir yes uh that's the reason my last recall i think uh the, the chief phyllis might be able to answer better than i can but my last uh my last discussion with his captain was there was 30 volunteers okay so these would be volunteers that are actually on call but off duty so no i we would never ask him we would never ask him to pull yes sir pull. Uh, we have chief phillips on his way to the podium so he will address your concerns representative hicks yes mr hicks uh there is going to be a sign up roster that the officers will sign to participate to uh, actually participate in the funeral escort sir thank you all right, thank you, Chief Phillips. Any other comments, questions? Representative Crawford. Speaker, can we hear from our attorney, uh, Kyle Haskins? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Haskins, would you please come to the podium? Yes, ma'am. Can you give us an update on um, 
the information you've received since our last meeting? Representative Crawford, I, I have not personally been provided with any kind of confirmation since our last meeting. However, I believe the gentlemen that are standing behind me and what they say, uh, I th my only concern always was whether this would be a covered event in the event something happened. Now, are we insured? Is our officer who's riding the motorcycle, is he going to be taken care of by insurance? And, and there's an indication that we've received a letter from our insurance carrier saying that they will be. Uh, that was always my concern. What got me hung up was the use of the word volunteer. You know, lawyers get hung up on terms. And, and truly, from what I understand from Grover, this is really not a, uh, in the classical context of the word volunteer, I assume it's somebody that's off duty. They're volunteering their time. That's not what I'm hearing today, as I understand it. Is this somebody who's on duty, who simply is going to be using their time on duty to perform this service? And if it's in the job description for the officers, and if insurance is going to make it a covered event, my legal concerns are gone. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Representative Anna Marshall. Uh, yes, this question is uh, for Chief Phillips. Yes, ma'am. Um, to the best of your knowledge, uh, the is there a special, do they have to have special training to do the motorcycles? Yes, ma'am. We're going to send them to training. They'll be trained to ride the motorcycles before they perform. The and duty. so how long is that training before these officers are able to provide that that service? I believe the training patrons? is two weeks. They'll go through a two-week course, ma'am. Okay. And then the... Most of the ones that did sign up are actual motorcycle riders that have the M endorsement on their... Okay. Uh, licenses so they do ride bikes okay. or motorcycles okay thank you for that uh, yes, the other question that I have is um, so they will be main so you'll provide your light horse will provide the maintenance for the motorcycles correct yes ma'am that's correct and we'll uh, house them out of the weather as well oh, okay is there a huge expense on the maintenance per motorcycle I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Wynn, but when we uh, got the invoices and stuff to Mr. Wynn, I think maintenance and upkeep is five years. The maintenance and upkeep, wherever the bikes are purchased, the motorcycles are purchased, the Harley dealership will do the upkeep, maintenance, oil, things of that nature. However, we'll be responsible for the tires. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Final questions, final comments. Representative Golden. Yes. Um, Ms. Mr. Wynn, um, you, and then the, the last time that I asked a question, I asked if you were, I was in the last meeting, uh, you were familiar with Patriot Riders. They're yes. a volunteer group and they have their own motorcycles. And uh, you said that, um, yes, you could use them, but you wanted your own. And um, I, I keep hearing the, the thing with the insurance, and I have a real concern about the policies and procedures and, and, and to make sure that it covers everything that it should. If your officers, those officers are going to be out for two weeks, how are they going to, you know, are, are they going to choose that this is the most important thing or it's not? And what if they get into a, an accident and they hit somebody or somebody hits them? Are we going to be liable for any deaths? Let me let me go back to your first question. Uh, I, mean, I remember the question you asked me if I was familiar with Patriot Guard. Yes, I am familiar with Patriot Guard. This is actually where I borrowed the ideal. Uh, I guess if I, I gave you a misunderstanding when I said that I would not rather not use them. My thought on that was I would rather use our own native veterans to escort our own native vet, our own native people to escort our veterans. Along with that. When you when you ask for a Patriot Guard, they may be able to come, they may not be able to come, and you're kind at their mercy. If we're going to escort our veterans to our fi their final resting place, their last mile, it's it's nice to be able to know that we can do that, that we'll have our own people to do that. Secondly, as far as the two weeks, I, uh, that's really Chief Phillips' uh, uh, answer on that. Uh, I think um, I, I just left. I just took a course. Uh, two-day course to get my endorsement on my license and they teach me the different safety features of it how to how to go around curves how to avoid obstacles but the course uh, Chief Phillips has talked about it entails more about the patrolling and more about the stopping intersections and more the responsibilities and duties of it so you know if we look at the long term 
If we're sending a, an officer to school for six months, or to take away from their duty, we're doing it because it's gonna be the benefit not only of the Creek Tribe, but of the officers itself in the police department. So I think if it takes two weeks, the training they get during those two weeks would be more, more would be beneficial to them in, in performing their duties. Uh, as I said, what was your last question? I forgot. Oh, did I? Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Representative McHenry, this is the final question. <clears throat> um, in, in my experience of funerals and escorts, they haven't always been on paved roads and roads that have been kept up. And, and I know our citizens, and including veterans and all, are not always buried in uh, Fort Gibson or other areas. And I know that sometimes when we go bury our people, we're on a goat trail. Yes. Now, are these motorcycles going to be able to accommodate that trip that's 10 miles into the back country? No, sir. Usually not. When I say no, sir, there could be black, there could be black roads, there could be some, there could be some high gravel and everything. I'm not going to say no completely. There, there, there are roads that they get into, but, but we, we addressed that. We looked at that. And that's one of the reasons we said, okay, if we're going to give them, we're, we're going to escort our veterans, uh, and we can't get back into a place back down around uh, High Spring, where they're going back two miles away off of the main road and then back down to the dirt roads, as, as you know, uh, 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 Reverend. Um, but we, when we addressed that, we said, okay, if we can't do that part, let us do the part where we can go from the funeral home to the church. Let us still address it where we can still escort them as we can. But no, sir, I, I couldn't stand there and tell you that we can go down every dirt, every dirt road because there are some we probably can't. But again, it's the thought of being able to do part of that anyway, if we could just do it. You know, there's, there's just such an issue of, uh, of course, being a veteran, I guess maybe that's why I'm so adamant about this, but we have not, we have not addressed and honored our veterans. I'm talking about not just, not just our tribe, but in general. And this is just another area I think that we need to continue to honor our veterans. We're here, our people are here because our, our own people stood and fought in wars that uh, wasn't even their wars, you know. And but anyway, I just I, I won't start preaching and pass off. I promise. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Roll call vote, please. Thomas Inyahola Osborne. Yes. Daryl Proctor. Yes. Mark Randolph. Yes. Galen Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Deer. Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sander Golden? No. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? No. Randall Hicks? No. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. You have 11 in favor, three against. 11 in favor, three against. NCA 22 104 is adopted. NCA 22 155, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the Centers for the D Disease Control and Prevention, closing the gap with social determinants, determinants of health accelerator plans grants. Sponsor, second speaker, Robert Huff. Motion to adopt. Second speaker Robert Huff makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Discussion. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Alan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Louis Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Sandra Golden? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-155 is adopted. <clears throat> NCA 22-116, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the United States Department of Education for the benefit of Muscogee Creek Nation, Department of Education and Training. Sponsor, second speaker, Robert Huff. Motion to adopt. Second speaker, Robert Huff, makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. 
Discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Sinihola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Ellen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Hunter Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-116 is adopted. NCA 22-117, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the Institute of Museum and Library Services for the benefit of the College of the Muscogee Nation. Sponsor, Representative Anna Marshall. Motion to adopt. Representative Anna Marshall makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Discussion? Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomasine Yehola Osborne? Yes. Errol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Ellen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Inner Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-117 is adopted. NCA 22-118, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation establishing the Muscogee Creek Nation Veterans Affairs Revolving Fund for various activities of the Muscogee Creek Nation Veterans Affairs Services Office. Sponsor, Representative Leonard Gouge. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Leonard Gouge makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Joseph Hicks. Discussion. Speaker, uh, ask Mr. Wynn to come up and speak. Mr. Grover Wynn, come on down, sir. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, Speaker and Council again. Um, this revolving account is actually to allow us to get donations. We set up a web page where we're able to take donations and also we're in the process of putting together with uh, Mr. Mike Harjo, one of our veterans, a uh, benefit, uh, veterans benefit concert, concert in, in uh, February of next year. So this allows us to take donations that we otherwise couldn't. It also allows us to be able to help uh, veterans in ways that we can't now. Right now, thank, 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 all the thanks to the council members and gaming that we're able to have some funding to help them, but we're not able to help our veterans a lot of times like we need to. Uh, some of our home in, homelessness, some of the hunger, some of the different, even the various things. Sometimes a veteran will need gas to go uh, to, a, to the doctor's appointment, or sometimes a family will want to go to the graduation of, the, of their their new veteran. But we, with this uh, donation, with his revolving account, we'll be able to take donations so that we can do more with it. We can not only help our own more, our own Creek citizens, our Creek veterans, but we can help our, the other Native veterans that are in our, our reservation areas. Outstanding. Muddle, sir. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness. Any comments or questions? Council representatives. Yes, ma'am. Representative yes, Golden. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Mr. Wynn, do you have someone in your office who could help account for the funds that, that are going in and out? Yes, yes. We also will be accountable with uh, with finance. This will be coming through finance too, and all this. So, yes, ma'am. We do have uh, our uh, my assistant uh, Rachel Riddle will be the one that will be doing the accountability on this. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Hearing and seeing none, roll call vote, please. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Sinihola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Kaylin Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22. Dash 118 is adopted. NCA 22 119, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation amending MCNCA Title 35, Chapter 3, entitled Medical Travel Assistance. Sponsors are second speaker Robert Huff, co sponsor Representative Leonard Gatch. Motion to adopt. Second speaker Robert Huff makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Discussion. Speaker. 
Second I speaker, a, yes. I can make an amend, uh, amendment, please, on uh, under Chapter 3, on page 2, on line item 11, where it says assistance up to $10,000 for uh, cancer. I want to replace that 10000 to make it 20000 The amendment on the floor is in Chapter 3, line 11, amending 10000 to 20000 That is the motion on the floor. Is there a second? Representative Leonard Gouge seconds the motion. The motion again is change the amount from 10000 to 20000 Discussion? Representative Hicks. Uh, on page one as well. On page one. On page one as well? No, page one. That, that's, that's on page one, line 9 and 10. That's just the original way it reads now. Original. Okay. That's all that is. Very well. Okay. Page one, that's the original version of the bill. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Any discussion? No more discussion? Roll call vote, please. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Mihola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Kaylin Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Senator Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. The motion to increase the amount from 10,000 to 20,000 passes. Back to the main motion. Do we have any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Errol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Ellen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-119 is adopted. NCA 22-120, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of 2022 NACD technical assistance grant funds awarded from the National Association of Conservation Districts, NACD, for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation Conservation District. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Aylan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Speaker, have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-120 is adopted. <clears throat> The next item on the agenda will take a two-thirds full council vote. It will need 11 votes to pass. NCA 22-121, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing a special appropriation to Upfusky ceremonial ground to purchase a tractor and related equipment. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by second speaker Robert Huff. Discussion. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Ellen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-121 <clears throat> is adopted. And I believe we have some Upfusky ground members here. Could you please stand and be recognized? We appreciate you all being here. <clears throat> Mudo, Mudo. Next item on the agenda. NCA 22-122, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of the National Park Service Tribal Historic Preservation Officer THPO grant for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation Historic and Cultural Preservation Department. Sponsor, Representative Galen Cloud. Well, I, uh, Oklahoma is a Justin and uh, 
Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Discussion? Do we have any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Heft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-122 is adopted. NCA 22-123, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of funds awarded from the Oklahoma Department of Transportation for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation's Department of Transportation. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Mary Crawford. Discussion. Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Randall Hicks. Yes. Robert Heft. Yes. Anna Marshall. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne. Yes. Daryl Proctor. Yes. Mark Randolph. Yes. Aylan Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Steer. Yes. Patrick Freeman. Yes. Sandra Golden. Leonard Gouge. Yes. Speaker, 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-123 is adopted. <clears throat> NCA 22-124, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of funds awarded from the United States of America, Department of Transportation, Federal Transit Administration, for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation's Department of Transportation. Sponsor, Representative Joseph Hicks. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Joyce Deer. Do we have any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Kaylin Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Deer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Andrew Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouch? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-124 is adopted. NCA 22-125, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of funds for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation's Light Horse Police Department for the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services 2022 COPS Office Tribal Resources Grant Program, Equipment and Training. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by second speaker Robert Huff. Any discussion? No discussion? Roll call vote, please. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Carol Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-125 is adopted. <laughs> NCA 22-126, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation, authorizing the expenditure of the U.S. Department of Justice Office on Violence Against Women, FY 2022, grants to Indian tribal governments to exercise special domestic violence criminal jurisdiction grant award for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation Light Horse Police Department. Sponsored, Representative Sandra Golden. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Sandra Golden makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Anna Marshall. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 
14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-126 is adopted. <clears throat> NCA 22-127, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of the National White Collar Crime Center grant award for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation Light Horse Police Department. Sponsor, Representative Sandra Golden. Make a motion to adopt. Representative Sandra Golden <clears throat> makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Second. Anna Marshall. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Roll call vote, please. Oh, as you were. Zachariah Harjo, did you have some a comment, sir? I see your hand raised via Zoom. I did. Um, thank you, Speaker, for allowing me to speak. Um, we got some feedback from the AG's office. Uh, Mr. Clint Wilson uh, noted that there, uh, for to pass this uh, execution of the grant award, would require a limited waiver of sovereign immunity. Uh, this agency is tied to DOJ. It's pretty, that's pretty standard, and we do that all the time for DOJ. However, uh, there wasn't a TR in place, and so it was the AG's recommendation that we shouldn't move forward with legislation to expend until we have a TR in place, giving the, the nation authority or indemnifying the agency as well as uh, uh, executing a limited waiver of sovereign immunity before we pass legislation to obligate and expend. And so uh, the recommendation was to postpone until uh, the November session. Very well, council, do we I have any motion? Did you all hear the postponement suggestion? Do we have anyone willing to postpone? Representative Sandra Golden I makes make a motion. motion. Yes, ma'am, makes a motion to postpone to November, seconded by Representative Randall Hicks. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, the motion is to postpone to next month's meeting. Roll call vote, please. Sandra Golden. Leonard Gouch? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles yes. McHenry? Yes. Thomas Senehola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Alan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. <clears throat> NCA 22-127 has been postponed to November's council meeting. NCA 22-128, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation appropriating funds to be used for transactional costs related to accepting donated real property located in Okmulgee County, Oklahoma. Sponsor, Representative Galen Clem. Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt. Seconded Second. by Representative Thomasine Yahola Osborne. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-128 is adopted. NCA 22-129, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the benefit of the Muscogee Creek Nation Department of Housing. Sponsor, Representative Charles McHenry. Speaker, I make a motion to adopt. Representative Charles McHenry makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Second Speaker Robert Huft. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Alan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-129 is adopted. <clears throat> NCA 22-130 a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security 
FY 2022 Tribal Homeland Security Grant Program for the benefit of the Department of Light Horse Police Department and Emergency Management Department. Sponsor, second speaker, Robert Huff. Motion to adopt. Second speaker, Robert Huff, makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Robert Huff. Yes. Anna Marshall. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Thomas Inihola Osborne. Yes. Daryl Proctor. Yes. Mark Randolph. Yes. Aylan Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Steer. Yes. Patrick Freeman. Yes. Sandra Golden. Yes. Leonard Gouge. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Randall Hicks. Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-130 is adopted. NCA 22-131, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the U.S. Department of Agricultural for the benefit of the Division of Agriculture and Natural Resources Loop Square Meat Company. Sponsor, Representative Galen Cloud. Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-131 is adopted. NCA 22-132, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration for the benefit of the Office of the Secretary of the Nation and Commerce. Sponsor, Representative Galen Cloud. Representative Galen Cloud makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Leonard Gouge. Do we have any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Louis Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. We had 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-132 is adopted. NCA 22-133, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the Internal Revenue Service for the benefit of the Office of the Secretary of the Nation and Commerce. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt, seconded by Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Do we have any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huff? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Thomasine Yehola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Speaker, you have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-133 is adopted. NCA 22-134, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing the expenditure of grant funds awarded from the Internal Revenue Service Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program for the benefit of the Office of the Secretary of the Nation and Commerce. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Thomas Inihola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Alan Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joy Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks?
Joseph Hicks. Yes. Speaker, 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-134 is adopted. NCA 22-135, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation authorizing an appropriation for the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program for the benefit of the Office of the Secretary of the Nation and Commerce. Sponsor, Representative Randall Hicks. Motion to adopt. Representative Randall Hicks makes a motion to adopt. Second. Seconded by Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Do we have any discussion? No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Randall Hicks. Yes. Robert Huft. Yes. Anna Marshall. Yes. Charles McHenry. Yes. Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Yes. Daryl Proctor. Yes. Mark Randolph. Yes. Caitlin Cloud. Yes. Mary Crawford. Yes. Joyce Steer. Yes. Patrick Freeman. Yes. Sandra Golden. Yes. Leonard Gouge. Yes. Joseph Hicks. Yes. Yes. We have 14 in favor, zero against. 14 in favor, zero against. NCA 22-135 is adopted. NCA 22-136. A law of the Muscogee Creek Nation repealing NCA 22, or as you were, NCA 21-084. A law of the Muscogee Creek Nation repealing MCNCA Title 16, Chapter 4, and creating new law in a new title, 50, entitled Light Horse Police and authorizing an appropriation for the Light Horse Commission as amended by NCA 21-135. Sponsor, Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Speaker motion to adopt. Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne makes a motion to adopt, seconded by second speaker Robert Huff. Discussion. Speaker. Question, Speaker. Representative Proctor, is there a substitute on this bill? Is there a substitute? Um, no, sir. No substitute, sir. All right, I was just looking at uh, on my email that there was a substitute for this. Yeah, and we have Okay, all right, thank you. Alicia, was there a substitute for this through? At committee level. At a committee level, there was a substitute, sir. That was uh, discussed during that. All right, thank you. Yes, sir, you're welcome. Any other discussion, comments? Representative Golden. Are we voting on the substitute or are we voting on this? <laughs> well, the substitute was approved during the, the committee, so. Okay, so, so that substitute uh, was to allow the commission to be put under the chief's office? Right. Uh, well, it doesn't say that on here, and there were some specific things that we discussed. And so my concern is that at this time uh, and what is faced with the nation, we the chief just can't have oversight over this commission um, because of all the other things that are going on. And really, I, I've attended their meetings. I talked to them. And, and there is a, a, a problem. Sandy, we're having with, trouble uh, hearing you, ma'am. I'm so sorry. There is a problem with um, people getting along. And so I, I think between them, if they can agree, and I know they can, I worked on a board for the last six months or no, before that. And they were down to two, uh, four people, and now they're down to three. And they've managed to conduct business all along. And we can't just let them uh, stop their meetings because they want to see what we're going to do. And then they're going to say, well, now we want you to do this. Then they're going to ask for the, the chief for more information and more money. And I think what we need to do is put them to task and have them meet and do the things that they need to do. What I heard at the meeting was that they need to put their fifth person on, on um, this board, on this commission. They need to hire an attorney, and they need to hire a secretary. That's probably why we haven't gotten the minutes. Uh, we don't get announcements for their meetings. And, you know, so if, if they're infighting, you know, they're excellent people. They're experienced. They're knowledgeable, and they're professional. And I think their attitude has gotten in the way, and somebody needs to say, you guys need to work together. 
because that's what our nation is all about. We need to build bridges. We're, we need to build relationships, and we have to help this department be the best that they can be. And uh, with that, um, I'd like to most make a motion that we postpone it for, 30 day, uh, for 90 days and have them task out these three things that they need to get conducted, and they cannot uh, resign. If they do, they have to pay all the money back that they already got for doing this kind of work. We have a motion on the floor to postpone for 90 days. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Representative Darrell Proctor. Discussion? Do we have any discussion? Roll call vote, please. We had a uh, question by Representative Gouge. My apologies. Yes, sir. The floor is yours. Speaker, I'd like to hear from uh, Mr. Fife about this issue. Jeff Fife, would you come to the podium, sir? Representative Gouge, please. Mr. Fife, you have some experience with this, and you have some background with the with the police department. Can you give us a, an idea of where, where we should be going with this? Uh, with respect to this body, it is this body's ultimate decision. Now, the, the historic background I can provide is 89, NCA 89-148 created our Light Horse Department. In that creation, it assembled a commission that was composed of the principal chief, the district court judge, and the speaker of the National Council. Uh, moving forward, at some point, uh, three, four chief terms ago, the commission was abolished. In light of McGirt, the police commission was identified as a component that is needed. Uh, imagine the uh, potential of prejudice by any of the three bodies that formerly formed the police commission, principal chief, speaker of the council, and a district court judge. The district court judge would be hearing cases, of course, so there's problems with that setup. Uh, when this was abolished uh, in 2004 or five, I believe, uh, that placed the entire department and oversight under the principal chief. The Reservation Protection Commission, in response to McGirt, did agree and discuss that this commission needs to be in place. Uh, late in the last council session, former Representative Jones contacted me. He knew I was a member of that body, um, asked if we had any ideas uh, how this police commission could work. I presented a draft. From there, a draft came to this body. Um, it went back, or it was suspended, I believe, uh, for further discussion. And some then ranking officers, maybe the entire department, I don't know, had input back to this body, and amendments were added. Uh, the entire, uh, I, as I recall, sir, the original draft was maybe five pages long after it was rejected at this body and sent back to Light Horse for input. It becomes uh, 12, 13, 14 pages long. So um, I, I did set, uh, as a member of the commission, uh, December, January, February, uh, my first meeting I identified early. We needed organization. Uh, we needed to follow decorum. Uh, Robert's Rules of Order was uh, suggested and adopted on the floor. Uh, since that time, I can't uh, articulate any events that have happened. I do hear things, as you do. I know there are some issues. Uh, I still think a form of a commission uh, is probably needed. I also believe that the qualifications of candidates needs to, uh, the, the draft I presented 
to represent then Representative Jones would have required all candidates to possess a bachelor's degree and have experience in Indian country law enforcement. Um, amendments were made, and like I say, that's the extent. I, I I hope I answered most of your questions, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, sir. Any questions while we have Jeff at the podium? Thank you, Mr. Five. Uh, yes, Representative Freeman. So, uh, Mr. Five, I just, uh, you know, going forward, you know, if we, uh, the commission stays intact, I mean, we, I know that we need attention and some logistical things, administrative things, uh, some things that, uh, that maybe sh could possibly structure and enhance this uh, commission. Uh, do you see as a viable solution to keep, you know, as you said, the McGirt required, you know, this is our response to the McGirt uh, through the Reservation Commission. This is one of the things that we ultimately came out of, about the only thing that really, that tangible that we came out of the Reservation Commission. So do you think this is a viable thing that if we keep effort and uh, input and supported legislatively, you think is still worth going forward? Yes, Mr. Representative Freeman, I, I, again, I do see value in, in retaining a commission, a police commission. Uh, now, that Reservation Protection Committee report was about 200 pages long, as I believe. Um, there is no doubt a need to prevent political influence from, you know, to, to put it bluntly, the police chief needs to be allowed to demonstrate longevity of performance. Under the former structure, it was dependent on who's elected. That, that has to be the cornerstone of sovereignty if we're gonna retain any of this. And if we don't want to retain sovereignty and we wanna demonstrate publicly a lot of chaos, then you know we can continue that path. But this commission under this current law is, it, like I say, the draft I submitted, it, it wasn't perfect. It needed this, the attention of this body, um, but it, it, it certainly was convoluted after additional pages were added to it and created a lot of, uh, you know, conflicts. You know, the, another thing I would point out, that police commission doesn't need to contain persons who hold a commission card or an active officer with anyone that may do business with the Muscogee Nation. Tulsa PD, Highway Patrol, wherever. If those bodies have a cross-deputization agreement with the nation and they ultimately select our police chief, it can create problems. Problems happen all the time out there in the field. Disagreements happen. And they certainly happen when we're discussing sovereignty. Very well. Thank you. Representative Freeman, is that good? Just one comment. I just think, I just think that, uh, you know, yes, it, I think it, all the other oversight committees that we have, we've duly supported with legislative throughout the years, you know, and this is something that uh, vitally important recognized through the Reservation Commission. I think it, do, it, it does do our due diligence to keep supporting this and keep building this. This is something that's new to, uh, this is a new chapter, a new uh, chapter, chapter 50, I can't think, the creating the new law in Title 50 is, is a new chapter. So uh, I think it, it doesn't, uh, I think it's short-sighted of us to not go forward and keep supporting something that's so vital in our process as we keep supporting McGirt. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I will remind the council that we have a, Motion and a second to postpone this bill for 90 days. Any more discussion? Representative Thomasine, Yehola Osborne. In regards to Mr. Fife's recommendation to have a commission, I respect that. But I don't know if it's these sitting commissioners that need to be on the commission. Within the last couple of days, we've seen emails from both sides supporting their side. So that is an example of the division of the commission. To me, the way it's going, it's just a rat's wheel. We're not getting anywhere. 
and we cannot make anybody do anything. So when you talk about making somebody get along, that doesn't mean they're going to do that. So I would, rec I guess what I'm saying is, is that I just feel like we should go ahead and repeal and take a little bit of time and then come back to the table. If this is, the, this is what we need as a commission, it needs to be revamped because there's a lot of things that have taken place that aren't getting us anywhere. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Marshall, did you have a comment, question? A comment. Um, I think that, you know, this commission probably has not had a really clear understanding of their own role. And I don't know whose responsibility it was to set them down and explain to them out of the convolutedness that we've seen and the chaos that we've seen, that they have not been given the opportunity to exercise their authority uh, as a police commission. And I, I think that if there's a way that we can amend this, make some changes, whatever needs to be done, um, and then someone needs to sit down with them. I don't know whose responsibility that is. Maybe it's the council's responsibility to get Light Horse and the commission together and have a discussion about those roles where it's done in a respectful and dignified manner. And um, so that's just a suggestion that I have. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Representative Yohola Osborne. One of the issues that I have is the fact that we have someone on the commission who was once a light horse police officer who was terminated. So that, that creates issues. So that's why I'm going back to the commission right now is the fact that I don't know if it's this, these particular people that need to be on the commission. Um, there's been a couple of things that have happened that I'd like to bring forward. And, you know, it's kind of iffy, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Is that, first of all, Larry Bible, who is a chairman, he is in full support of, of the repealing this commission. Um, something that has happened is that Commissioner Henry actually reached out to one of the Light Horse Police officers and asked them if they were interested in the Light Horse Police Chief's position. The police officer said he was not because he was not qualified. He was non-Indian. So I just don't think that's good business when you have a commissioner who's gonna reach out to a police officer. The second thing is, is Ms. Henry wanted to have a meeting this past Thursday so that they could seat that fifth commissioner and also hire an attorney before today. <laughs> so again, there's division here and this commission is not gonna get us anywhere the way it's going. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, ma'am. Any other comments? Speaker. Yes, Representative Hicks. Speaker, I got one, just one question for the sponsor of the, the legislation. Uh, Ms. Osborne, did you happen to get with all the commissioners uh, during the writing of this legislation? No, sir, I didn't. All right, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Representative Hicks. Representative Golden. Miss um, Henry, it was, um, she's on the Zoom. And I did go to the meeting, and I was supposed to go to the meeting that they were supposed to have this week, and I understood that uh, Mr. Bible canceled it, and so they couldn't do any discussion. So I uh, would like to give some time to Ms. Henry to um, answer to whether or not she did what she's accused of. Commissioner Henry, are you on the line? Denise Henry, can you hear us? If she's not on the, the Zoom, uh, sir, uh, that question about what she did was, was asked of me to ask her, and I asked her. And also, um, she was approved by the council, uh, even though she was supposedly terminated or whatever. 
<clears throat> that was explained. And so as far as her being on that commission for 10 months, if there was going to be a, a problem. It's hard to that, hear you back here, Sandy. So sorry. Have, they could have brought that forward. Uh, also, uh, if they needed assistance, uh, I think they could have reached out to um, Mr. Fife. Uh, they could also reach out to um, the AG's office. And right now, Mr. Uh, Clint Wilson was on that MNB board that I w was on, and he has since moved on to Attorney General's office. So I think he would be a good person that they could re uh, confer with, and I would recommend that they do that because he was the one that helped that uh, board continue. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other comments, questions? Call for the vote. Call for the vote has been called. Roll call vote, please. Sander Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Speaker, could you identify what was actually voting on? Yes, sir. The motion on the floor is to postpone for 90 days, Representative Hicks. Yes. Randall Hicks? No. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Uh, yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Thomas Inyahola Osborne? No. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? No. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Deer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. No. Nelson Harjo? No. Speaker, you have 10 in favor, 5 against. Ten in favor, five against. NCA 22-136 has been postponed for 90 days. Last item on the agenda. NCA 22-137, a law of the Muscogee Creek Nation amending MCNCA Title 26, subsection 3-102, Delta, entitled Compensation. Sponsor, Representative Thomas Yahola Osborne. Speaker, motion to adopt. Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne makes a motion to adopt. Seconded by Representative Anna Marshall. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, roll call vote, please. Thomasine Yehola Osborne? Yes. Daryl Proctor? Yes. Mark Randolph? Yes. Galen Cloud? Yes. Mary Crawford? Yes. Joyce Steer? Yes. Patrick Freeman? Yes. Sandra Golden? Yes. Leonard Gouge? Yes. Joseph Hicks? Yes. Randall Hicks? Yes. Robert Huft? Yes. Anna Marshall? Yes. Charles McHenry? Yes. Nelson Harjo? Yes. Speaker, you have 15 in favor, zero against. 15 in favor, zero against. NCA 22 137 is adopted. That concludes our agenda. Other business? Council Representatives, do we have any other business? Hearing none, announcements. Do we have any announcements, Council? Representative Cloud. Speaker, uh, Madhu, uh, I just want to announce that the Dewar Indian Community Center will be having their haunted house tonight and tomorrow. Uh, I believe it starts that dark till when everybody, everybody gets scared out of the house, I guess, <laughs> I don't know, till 10. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Shane. Outstanding. Dewar Haunted House, uh, Representative Marshall. Uh, yes, I'd like to announce the uh, first uh, Veterans Women's Summit that will be Thursday, November the 3rd, and it will be held at River Spirit from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank you. Outstanding. Thank you, ma'am. Representative Hicks. Thank you, Speaker. The Old Kluski Indian Community Annual Halloween Carnival is this evening starting at 6 p.m. Uh, they will have free hot dogs. There's a chili contest, um, pumpkin carving contest. And there's a lot of kids and adults costume contest, contests, and then a lot of games for the children to play. So starts at 6 p.m. Everybody's invited. Thank you. Moto sounds like a great event. Any other announcements, Council Representatives? I will say this while I have the microphone. I wish the Marine Corps very happy birthday, November the 10th, and simplify to all the jarheads here. So Moto for being here. Any last announcements? Hearing none. Adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second speaker, Robert Huff, makes a motion to adjourn. Seconded by Representative Thomasine Yahola Osborne. Any discussion? None. Voice vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, 
Any opposed? Uh, Same sign. Hearing none opposed, I would like to ask Representative Charles McHenry to say our benediction, please. And this will serve as our adjournment. Let us pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just praise your holy name. Father, giving thanks for this life that we have, thanking you for the breath that you have given us, Father. Now, Lord, that we, as we came here today, Father, we know that your spirit has led us and guided us, Father, and we just thank you, Father, for that. That, Father, oftentimes we have to make tough decisions. Oftentimes we have to uh, uh, do things that are not always uh, uh, favorable, Father. But, Lord, we just pray, Father, that the decisions that were made today have your blessing. We pray that today, Father, that the decisions that were made, Father, uh, uh, will be the best for our nation, the best for our citizens, Father. And, Father, as we continue to move forward, Father, we pray that, Father, that you will continue to lead us, to guide us, to uplift us, Father, to bring us together as one, Father. That, Father, that as we continue to move forward, Father, that we thank you for your increase, we thank you for your favor, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, my old Representative McHenry. We are adjourned at 11.23 a.m.